as I'm preparing these Sunday classes, I come across so many things. And this quote from Nayira Wahid just really struck me. No might make them angry, but it will make you free. If no one has ever told you, your freedom is more important than their anger. What a beautiful statement. And of course, that's not something that we're told. Our freedom is more important. I love how that resonates. But Gabor Mate's book, The Myth of Normal and the Toxic Culture that We Live In, where right now, this is part two of Before the Body Says No. The first of the questions today and the fourth of his six questions in this chapter is, what is the hidden story behind my inability to say no? So we all have these limiting core beliefs or core deficiency beliefs about ourselves that are natural given the way that we are as children, especially in our culture. And then we justify our, our experience in the world according to these beliefs. So let's look at these questions. And you can you know, close your eyes or you can journal about them however you want to do this. If you feel like you're getting kind of dragged into traumatic memory or something that's a bit too intense, bring yourself back. So we'll start with this awareness of right now where we are in our body. Look around the room, notice that you're in a safe location, look for cues of safety. And then begin to really do this somatic inquiry. So from our own body and aware of our own body, what must I believe about myself to deny my own needs this way? Other people's expectations and ideas about our role in our life and their life, our function, our expectations around, am I going to be safe if I don't fulfill their needs? And children are especially vulnerable to this. So one of the ways that you might be approaching this is, is this something you would burden someone else with? Would you call a child useless? if they're not making themselves useful. And that may be something that you heard as a child, either verbally or in a more covert way. Just right now, as an adult, as you're looking at this, do you believe that that's true? Would you, if you were to bring up a child that you know, would you call them useless? if they're not fulfilling your idea of what they should do. And if that is something that you have heard, see if you could sit with that with some compassion for yourself. That is a very difficult idea or judgment to feel like we're useless or to be told that in some way. Notice your breath. Notice that you're here. Put your hand on your heart if you want, or hold your own hands. What, what is the hidden story? Why is it you can't say no? If you pride yourself on being the strong one, why is that? Where does that come from? So that's the next question. Where did I learn these stories? So we learn them as a child primarily. Children will do anything to preserve whatever kind of caregiver parent bond they have. One of the things that Gabor says in the book is, we take a look at our childhood experiences as they actually were. 
so that we can let go of them. We can see them. In a simple inquiry like this, we don't necessarily want to go into all of the different experiences that led to the belief. We're staying as that witness. And where did I learn these stories? And acknowledge that, like all other children, we take that on. Because if we could control it, if we're the ones who are at fault, then maybe we can change it. And the reality is that we're not to blame for what happens to us as a child. We're not to blame for whatever's happening with our parents. It was not our fault. Let's sit with that for a little bit more. And as an adult, you might even intervene. Especially if an age is coming up. Well, I remember when I was eight years old and this thing happened. And it really cemented the idea that I was useless. As your adult self, you might be able to come in and say, you know, that's not true. What was really going on then was, it was never true what you believed. You were never useless. There was some dysfunction, something going on with your parents or grandparents or whoever that was that gave you that idea. It's not true. Give yourself time to really let that soak in. What I believed about myself as a child affects how I am now. It affects my inability to say no, to set good boundaries. And take a moment to connect with that child who had those experiences. So in the book, Gabor has, in a different chapter, but in the same book, he has some steps to seeing through these undermining beliefs. I thought we could go through those. So take whatever belief it is. If you're working with, I'm useless because I'm not performing in a way that they wanted, or whatever belief it is that leads you to not be able to say no to people. So bring that belief up. And notice it might be images, might be words, and then relabel it. So if you are an objective witness to that thought, to that experience, you might say, I'm having the thought that I have to be strong. I'm acting as if I think I'm only worthy when I'm being helpful. You can say that out loud to yourself. You could say it in your mind. This is one of the ways that we can see through some of those undermining beliefs. And then we might want to look at, well, what's going on in my brain that I would even have this? So this is my brain sending me an old familiar message from childhood. So these negative beliefs that we have about ourselves, they're not true and they're not a moral failing. They're not evidence that there's something really wrong with us. They are the effect of our circumstances. When we're treated in a certain way, our neural circuits develop in a certain way. And then this is what we end up with. We end up with these beliefs. So another suggestion he has is to refocus. So if a belief like that comes up and it's got kind of a grip on you, then to do something you enjoy, especially creative, physical, helps you to teach your brain. So if you refocus for 15 minutes, it helps to teach your brain that you're not being held in trance to that old story. So one of the things that we do when we do the Saturday morning practice of breathe, shake, and dance Whatever's happening when we start, 
through that practice, our experience changes, our mood lifts, we feel stronger, we have some fun. So you could do that practice or you could do something else that's fun. But give yourself a break. So we're not suppressing it, we're just not going along with it. And then this is where there's a little bit more of an inquiry. What has this belief actually done for me? And feel into your bodies, do this somatic inquiry. This is a longer inquiry than what we have time for now. This is something that's really helpful to do, to take each of the beliefs. You notice that you're not saying no, this whole process of tuning in. Why is it you're not saying no? What is the belief? What do I believe about myself that leads me to act in that way? And then when you look at it with clear eyes, what is it actually doing for you now as an adult? As a child, it might have helped to protect your relationship with your parents, but now it might leave you feeling ashamed, isolated, ill. It stops us from pursuing a meaningful life. And you could do this really specifically with each of the limiting beliefs and each of the ways that that plays out as an adult. And then to recreate. What is the life that you could have if you left behind some of those beliefs? Let's go into that. Where have I said no or denied the yes that wanted to be said? What would I create? And this picture of the tree and the swing where they're swinging off over the cliff kind of scares me. And it also really represents kind of stepping out into the unknown. Let's take a few minutes for this. In your mind's eye, what what could you say yes to? And we could get really quite specific to what joys have you denied yourself? When we play it safe, we miss out on things. And it might be something really quiet and internal, like drawing or painting or going for a walk all by yourself and sitting at the beach or somewhere nice that you are and just enjoying that. It might be creating a good meal for yourself, even though you're concerned about your weight, that you can enjoy what you're eating. There's so many ways big and small, that this plays out. Let's take a few minutes to sit with that. Where have I ignored or denied the yes? And and really bring that to life in your mind. What would that look like? In one very specific way. Continue to notice it, your body, your breath. You might also notice what is scaring you about it or making you nervous. You could do some work with that. So if you're imagining that you're You know, you're going to go out and do something that you're a little, you're feeling a little anxious about and you go and do it anyway. So we're not asking ourselves to do something outrageous. It's just something, you know, you make a phone call to someone to connect with them or you get out your flute and you play it or you go swimming or whatever that might be. And if there's any kind of nervousness about that in your body, you could look at the images of it, do some tapping, put them in a frame. We have many tools to work with this. And then come back into noticing the joy, noticing the the yes. What does that feel like in your body? So 
So this set of inquiries really comes as a set. We need to be looking into what happens in my body when I think about doing something that is different or I'm moving out into the world in a different way than I normally do. How am I holding myself back? Why? Where did I learn that? What do I believe about myself that I would hold myself back in this way? Because when we say yes to a lot of things that we're not really in, on board with or that don't really light us up, part of what we're doing is saying no to the things that do light us up. Just for another minute or so, notice, notice the yes. What does that feel like? What would that look like? This is kind of a teaser, this inquiry. It's something that could spark a lot of reflection and contemplation, sitting with what does my heart know? What is it I really want? And what's in the way of that? So we might have to take several steps and certainly we have to go back to it over and over. And then as we resolve some of the limiting beliefs and as we get more in touch with our strength, everything changes. Our life becomes much more aligned with who we are and what we really want to do, what we want to bring forward in our life. And that becomes a really exciting journey 